Hello, we have another project for you today. Today we're going to work on another quilt. We had a customer come in and bring a quilt that I quilted for her and I loved it. And we have this line here that I have always loved, but I didn't know what I wanted to do with it. Well, now I know what I want to do with it. It's called Wild Meadow by Moda. It is a pattern that is just going to be gorgeous when it's done. These colors are so rich and vibrant and I'm ready to use them. So let's get started. To get started with this quilt, <laughs> to get started with this quilt, we're gonna need a layer cake. I did not have a layer cake because we had sold all the layer cakes already. So what I did was I just cut some 10 inch squares from the bolt yardage over here and made my own 10 inch square. So I'm gonna have extras, but that's okay because I've got another project with this quilt that I want to use. So I'll show you that one later. But to get started, we've got our layer cakes. We are going to, you'll need one full layer cake. And I'll, sh let me bring you down to the table and I'll show you better. Okay, here we are. We're gonna take some of these squares, however many you feel comfortable stacking on top of each other. You can do it one at a time. You can do it 10 at a time. Whatever you can cut through easily, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna layer them together. Use your fingers to scratch them into place so that they're straight up and down. Then we're gonna take and cut a three and a half inch strip off this one side. So now we have two pieces. We're just gonna make two piles up here at the top. We're gonna grab a couple more squares and do the same thing. Line them on top of each other. I'll do about three or four at a time. Just make sure they're lined up pretty good. And when you've got them good, I use the table to line up one side, making sure it's straight. And then I'll cut off three and a half inches off the side of the layer cake. Whoop. I'm gonna make sure it cuts through all the way. Then I'm gonna lay them to my pile and I'm gonna get me some more and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna do this all the way through this pile right here. So I'm gonna take one, layer another one on top of it. I got a little bit of selvage on that one, but it's okay because it's going to be in my seam. I've got a couple of them laid on top of each other. And I'm going to take three and a half inches, line up my ruler, cut three and a half inches, and put them in my pile. When I get done with this whole stack right here, we'll come back for the next step. Okay, I'm gonna start by taking one from each stack, the fat cut and the skinny cut, and I'm gonna put them right side together, and I'm gonna sew it down this seam, quarter inch down the seam. I'm gonna do that for this entire stack, both stacks. I'm gonna take one and sew the other one. I just wanna make sure that they don't match. I want two separate prints right here. And now I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine and sew it together. Okay, I'm putting them right sides together, lining them up, taking it over to the sewing machine as I'm being serenaded by my grandson. <laughs> I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance. And if the thread doesn't cut, I'll cut it myself. So then I've got these two pieces sewn together to look like this. I'm gonna do this with the entire stack of layer cake cuts that we've already got. After that, I'm going to iron them flat and then we'll show you the next step. So first things first, take one of each of these prints, one of the big ones and one of the little ones Put them right side together. Take them to the machine. So a quarter inch seam down that long side. 
And when you get done there, we're going to do this whole stack and then we'll come back. We are going to start the next step. So we're going to line these up along this ruler, along this measuring line, and we're going to do it, cut it at five inches. One, two, three, four, five. So that's going to be right there. It should be straight in the middle of your square. We're going to cut it up like that. You're going to want to lay the, the block down with a skinny strip at the top. You're going to cut it in half. So you're going to have them like that, and then we're going to put them in another pile. I'm going to take the next one, and you can do these multiples at a time if you want. Straight down the middle, cut it at five inches. We're going to grab another one, skinny strip across the top at five inches. We're going to cut it in half. Now we've got two like that. We're going to put them in this pile. We're going to keep going all through these piles until we have them all looking like this. We now have our pieces cut like this. So what we're going to do at this point is take two of them and sew them together. But we're going to take alternate pieces, just any other piece, and we will sew them together. But instead of sewing them like this, we're gonna flip them like this. So we're gonna take one small section at the top, one small section from the bottom. We're gonna put them right sides together and we're gonna sew down the one seam at a quarter inch seam allowance. So let's get started. Okay, we've got the alternate pieces set opposite. So the small pieces on this end, and the other small pieces on that end. And we're gonna take them and put them right sides together and sew that quarter inch seam allowance down that one side. Once we get to the end, we've got it looking like this. We're going to make all of our units like this. This whole stack we made that we cut a minute ago, we're going to turn them into units that look like this. So let's keep going. Once we've sewn all of our units to, together to look like this, where one short is at one side and one short is at the other, we're going to flip them over and we're going to iron them. And I like to hit it with a little best press to starch it just a little bit. So I'm going to iron all of these down. And when I'm done ironing, then we'll start the next phase of this quilt. This is one of the easiest quilts. It's quick to go together. It's super cute when it's done. So that is what we are doing. We're going to keep doing this. Spray it. Press it until we're done with all these units of being pressed.
Once we have all of our units sewn together like this, we're going to put a sash between them. Now you can sew them together like this, but we're gonna put a sash between them and you'll love the outcome. So let's show you what that looks like. We are going to cut the selvage end off of the strips. We have cut some two and a half inch strips and this is what we are gonna use for our sashing. So we're gonna take one of these where they're going up and down and we're gonna sew a sash down the one side at a quarter inch seam allowance. And again, this sashing that we're using is two and a half inches wide. So we're gonna sew that strip on there. I just cut a bunch of two and a half inch strips and then I am going to sew down the one side where I told you we're gonna put it down the side, then we're gonna cut it to size. You can cut it with scissors or rotary cutter, whatever. And now this piece has its sash on it. So now that I've got this one going up and down and I've got a sash ready for another piece, I'm gonna take my next one and instead of it also going up and down, I'm gonna turn it sideways so that one goes up and down and then one goes sideways. So I'm gonna sew it sideways with that strip I forgot to tell you when you got to this step, the sewing step, the step before that, which I forgot to tell you, is you're gonna take these units and you're gonna measure them. They should all be the same size. If they are not, you'll go with the smallest unit that you have and put them all to that size. So we have already done that. They're all the same size. And now we are sewing them one unit up and down, then a sash one unit side by side, then a sash, another unit up and down, sash, and then another unit on its side again. So we're gonna do that all the way until we get to the edge of the quilt. This particular unit will be six wide by seven down. Six times seven is the 42, which is how many squares were in the layer cake. If you want yours bigger, then just add more layer cake squares to it. If you want it smaller, take some away. But we are doing ours six wide by seven tall. So now that I've got the one unit going up and down, a sash, the next unit going side by side, we're gonna do another sash. And then we're gonna keep going, like I said, with the up and down, side by side, up and down, side by side, and a sash in between them until we get to the six wide. We do not want a sash on the first or the last square on the row. That being because we are going to make one long sash down the sides and the top of the quilt, so we don't need those little pieces on the sides. So we're gonna keep this process going until we have seven rows. And then we're gonna sew those rows together with a sash between them. So we've got started, now let's keep going. We've now got our rows assembled to where we have the sashing between each square. And remember, we have no sashing on the left side and no sashing on the far right side. That because we're going to add one long strip down the whole quilt. So we don't need to do sashing down that side. So we've got a square side by side laying down We've got a sashing, we've got a, the square up and down, we've got sashing, we've got side by side, up and down, all the way down, and then the next row is gonna start the opposite. So where this row started side to side, this next row block is gonna start up and down, and we're gonna put those together with a sashing in between them. So I've taken, I'm gonna put this row to the side, I've taken this row, and then I've got my sashing. I took two strips and sewed them together. And I'm going to take them, this row, this sashing, and pin it all along this top right here. So I'm gonna pin this. Just 
pin it sporadically down the row. If you're comfortable doing this without pinning it, that is fine, but I'm gonna pin it just to show you. Typically when I'm doing this, I really don't pin it. So I'm gonna pin all the way down this row and then we're gonna sew down here at a quarter inch seam allowance. I've got it pinned, I'm taking it to the machine and I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance down this whole strip, this whole row. Taking my pins out before I get to them. Just going to continue doing this all the way down the row and then I'll come back. Okay, I've got this row sewn with the sashing down one side. I'm going to start at this sashing. I'm going to grab my next row and I'm going to take it to where this side was going side to side. The square was. This square is going up and down. So I want them to be beside each other on the quilt because I don't want all going sideways all the way down this row. So I want it changed up. So this one's laying down on its side. This one's standing up. So I'm going to flip it right sides together. And I'm going to sew this seam all the way down at a quarter inch. And again, you can pin it, but if you're comfortable not pinning it, don't pin it. So I'm going to sew this all the way down at a quarter inch, just like I did that sashing. I'm gonna do this all the way down the row and when I get to the end, I'll come back. We've got our rows ready to put the sashing to the next row and I wanna show you the easiest way that I have found to do this is you're gonna flip it right sides together. So this one's going up and this one's going side by side, that's right. So I'm gonna pin this on the end of the row. Then I'm gonna to go to that sashing and I'm going to open it up, line that sashing up right here, and then roll it to the top. That way, I know that sashing is going to be straight up and down where it's supposed to be and not off center. Then I'm going to flatten this row out. I'm going to go over to this, this sashing. I'm going to line these sashing strips up right here, this one to this one. I'm going to roll it to the top. Then I'm going to pin it. This should be right in between here. There shouldn't be any gaps or any puckers or anything. So that's right. So I'm going to go to the next one. I'm going to do the same thing all the way down this row. I'm going to flatten it out. I'm going to line those sashings up. Roll it to the top. Pin it, make sure I don't have any gaps or puckers and I don't, move on to the next one. I will do this all the way down this row and then we'll sew a quarter inch seam allowance all the way down this side and then we'll do it again, another sashing and another row, another sashing and another row. So I'll be back with you in just a minute. Now I've just finished sewing that seam all the way down that side of the row and now I've got it to where, when I open it up, now you see what I mean where these, if you can see it, so you can see these seams lined up because I put them and lined them up and then I rolled them to the top. So that's why I do that. So that will end up like that. So I'm gonna continue doing this. I've got three rows on it so far and I'm gonna put another sashing here, another row, another sashing, another row, all the way until I run out of rows, which will be seven rows. So. I'll come back to you when I get to that state and then we will put the border sashing on and then we're done with the quilt top. So stay tuned. 
I've finished now sewing all my rows together. My whole top is one big piece. And I am going to take some of the strips that I have sewn together, like sashing, the two and a half inch strips, I'm gonna sew them together. And then I'm gonna go all the way down this line, this side of the quilt, and I'm gonna pin it all the way down one side. And then I'm gonna sew at a quarter inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna do the opposite side the same way. So either I'm gonna sew all the sides strips on or the two top and bottom strips but I wanna do one or the other. I can start with the top and bottom, get them done and then sew the sides on, or I can start by sewing the sides on and then when they're on, put the top and bottom on. Either way is fine, but that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna start by pinning my sashing around the edge of the quilt. And then I'm gonna sew a quarter inch seam allowance and I have chosen to start with the sides. So I'll be sewing my sides on first my left and my right side. And then when I get done with those, then I will sew my top and bottom sash on. And at that point, we will be done with the quilt. It was that easy and that quick. So let me finish this and then I'll come back to you and I will show you what it looks like. I'm sewing my last sash border on now and then we will lay it out and see what it looks like but the reason i do my sashing at two and a half inches on this quilt was because my sashing inside the quilt was two and a half inches as well so i did the outside as two and a half inches and i like the measurement of two and a half inches also because when i do my binding i cut it at two and a half inches so any excess of this sashing right here will go in my sashing bag and I will use that on another quilt later on. And if I don't have enough, then you can do um, scrappy binding and you just sew your different strips together to make one binding. So that is why I like to use the measurement of two and a half inches. That doesn't mean I always do, but I do like to use that a lot of times. So that's what I've done with this one. So I'm gonna finish sewing this border edge on, and then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. So stay tuned. We've got the quilt top done. All we need to do now is iron it and then send it to the long arm. Well, the long arm is me, so I'm sending it to myself. But the quilt top is done. It was that fast, that easy. You can do it. If you have any questions, contact me. I will help you in any way I can. But here is the quilt top and it looks wonderful. I haven't decided yet how I'm gonna quilt it. I've got a few different ideas in mind, but first steps first is to iron it. Then I will get it on the long arm and decide from there. So if you have any questions, you know how to reach me by Facebook, by YouTube, Instagram, cell phone, website, however you need to. Just get in touch with us. We'll help you any way we can. So until next time, happy quilting.